John Gifford Engel is an activist and a filmmaker. She has co-founded the Peace Jam Foundation 24 years ago, which currently has 14 Nobel Peace Prize winners on board. When she approached His Holiness the Dalai Lama with the idea to create the foundation, His Holiness agreed to become the founding Nobel Peace Prize winner on the board of directors. Her friendship with the Tibetan people dates back to 30 years ago when she volunteered for International Campaign for Tibet. She was involved in the second and the third Mind and Life conferences and later co-founded Colorado Friends of Tibet and sponsored Tibetan resettlement program in Boulder. Most important of all, she and her husband Ivan Suanyev has been nominated several times for the Nobel Peace Prize. She is also known for her award-winning documentary films including Children of the Light, Rivers of Hope and many others. Today we are honored to have her here with us to talk to her about her upcoming film, The Dalai Lama Scientist, which will be premiered on the 31st of this month at the 76th Venice International Film Festival. So it's nice to see you, Dawn, and congratulations on your new film. Thank you so much. So let me start by asking, you have titled your film The Dalai Lama Scientist. How well do you think you have managed to portray His Holiness the Dalai Lama as a scientist rather than a, a globally known religious figure? Well, you know, the title comes from something that the Dalai Lama himself said on stage in Los Angeles when there was a big birthday celebration for him. And he was talking about climate change and how important the role of scientists is in terms of helping everyone to meet the challenges that the world is facing right now. And he said, I've spent so much time with so, so many scientists for almost 40 years. I really think that, that, that me, myself, I'm half Buddhist monk, half scientist. And it was great when he said it and everyone applauded. But when you go through the film, you see that it's actually true. He really does have a scientific mind. And um, so many scientists, top scientists around the world who have worked with him have been inspired. They've been intrigued by his insights. They have changed their course of experimentation in the lab. And it's, it's really quite impressive when you watch the film. By the end of the film, it's, it's, it's a huge impact that he's had in, in the field of science, in several different fields of science specifically. Right. And how, how did the idea come to you about making a film on His Holiness the Dalai Lama and uh, that too about his journey into the world of science? We, we have um, a series of films that we're making. Every year we make a film about a leading Nobel Peace Prize winner around the world. And all of them so far have been about their life story. But when it came to the Dalai Lama, Everybody knows his life story. Many films have been made, like Kundun and others. And so we um, talked to uh, His Holiness in the private office, and we said, you know, what story should we tell? And they said that this, his work in the field of science has never really been captured in, in, in any film. There's actually several filmmakers who have tried. And it's a, it's a big su subject, and it's hard to make it fun and interesting and um, it, into a, a moving plot line. Um, so I think they gave up, <laughs> but we did it. Um, we, we pulled it off, and it, I think because we let the Dalai Lama tell his own story, His Holiness it is the one who tells the story, that when he was a little boy, if he hadn't been picked as the 14th Dalai Lama, he would have loved to have been an engineer or an electrician. I mean, he just loves technology, he loves science. And, and to let him tell that story from the time he was a little boy and then show gradually over his life the impact that he's had, which grows and grows and grows. Now he's got a whole new generation of scientists, young scientists, a whole new field of contemplative science that's as a result of his, his work um, and others being inspired to move forward. And he's got a whole new group of Buddhist um, practitioners, monks, nuns, who are highly trained and are learning science in the monasteries and are, are ready to collaborate. So this collaboration will go on for centuries. It's it's not just the Dalai Lama with some scientists. It's, it's He set up generations to come of people who can collaborate together. He's really brought the East and the West together, Buddhist science and Western science together so they can inform each other so that 
it can transform science, add more humanity to science, new insights to science, and discover new things so that will be a benefit for all of the 7 billion people who are living on planet Earth. So it's a very important message in this film. I'm, I'm, we're really hoping that millions and millions of people see this film because it's a voice that needs to be heard right now in this world with all of the craziness that's going on. His voice is so clear and so true. Absolutely. So His Holiness the Dalai Lama is known for his great sense of humor. Could you sh uh, share with us some uh, funny anecdote or an incident uh, while working with His Holiness the Dalai Lama? How is it working with him? It's fantastic working with His Holiness. It's mainly, it's an incredible honor and a privilege that he, over the years, has given so much time to the work that we are doing through, um, well, the Mind and Life Institute, Colorado Friends of Tibet. Um, I was part of the international campaign for Tibet before I started uh, co-founding Colorado Friends of Tibet, but especially Peace Jam. Um, he was the first Nobel Peace Prize winner to say yes, and he wanted to work with the youth of the world through Peace Jam. So I've been working with him um, for 30 years, and there's so many funny stories, but I think the thing that I love is that whenever he sees me, he always he always grabs my nose and goes like this <laughs> and, and laughs and says, oh, friend, and, and you know, he, he, he has the ability in, in just a second to make you feel really special and important. And I, I remember the very first time that I met him, um, I wasn't sure what to expect because I had been working for the U.S. Congress. And there, for most politicians really around the world, they have the public face and then they have who they really are. You know, when you're behind closed doors and you're working for them, you see who they really are. Mm -hmm. um, but with the Dalai Lama, he was the same no matter who he was with. with he was it with a leper on the street or whether he was with um, Congress, members of Congress from Washington, D.C., he was the same. So, right. Talking about films, uh, the most important, one of the most important uh, elements of uh, filmmaking, which is access. I believe there are a lot of rare and uh, never before uh, seen footage in your film. So I was wondering, how did you manage to get such kind of incredible element of uh, access? Well, the, first of all, it was the fact that the Dalai Lama said yes to um, having this film made and giving us an interview that we use throughout the um, throughout the whole uh, film. It's, there's a core interview that runs throughout the film, and, and he, he sat for that interview, and, and we talked about what our vision for the film. So him saying yes in the um, private office and the Mind and Life Institute um, um, sharing their footage. But really, the, the stuff, the rare unseen footage, the stuff that we found just through research. We had a couple of people doing research, and we found some things that no one has ever seen. Um, and some rare footage that no one had a copy of, but there was one woman in Switzerland who had a, one DVD of it. Um, and that was what we were able to use. It was high quality and we were able to use it. So it's um, really incredible the amount of time, energy, six years of work um, to track down the footage and put the film together. Absolutely. And here co comes the customary question that every filmmaker has to face. What is the biggest challenge that you face while completing or working on this project? I think it was the quality of the footage um, was one challenge because some of it is just really old and <laughs> it's, it's deteriorated over time and there's nothing. We even had a studio in Hollywood who, who um, processed the footage and they did the best they could, but some of it, it's it's just old, old, badly taken care of footage. Um, the other challenge was there's so much information. So we uh, tried to make the film for anybody to watch. And there's a very sophisticated science in this film and leading top scientists uh, and so making that clear, that was the other big challenge so that people could follow the conversation. We used a lot of motion graphics, we used a lot of animation, and um, we also summarize every section 
and compare Buddha science versus Western science. So we've done a lot of things. There are a lot of tools in the film to make it so your average person who doesn't know much about science or Buddhism, but who's just really interested in, in, in this intersection, this incredible coming together, they can watch the film and, and learn a lot um, in just an hour and a half. And it's really easy to understand even for those who aren't scientists. And that includes me. I'm, not a, I'm an economist by training, not a scientist. Right. As you just said, you uh, started your career as an economist and you have worked uh, for the United States Congress for many years. Uh, what made you pursue filmmaking? Meeting the Dalai Lama changed my life. I volunteered to help with the international campaign for Tibet. And then when I came to Dharamsala and started working with him and saw how he didn't have two faces, he was very extraordinary. Um, so very different from any leader I'd ever seen. Um, I made the decision to actually gradually, it got harder and harder to work for Congress and with all the hypocrisy and, and lies. And it, it was just all harder and harder to do when you knew that there was true integrity out there. And so ended up moving to Colorado, started Colorado Friends of Tibet, met the Dalai Lama, um, uh, many more times and um, started Peace Jam. So Peace Jam is the international educational outreach program from 14 Nobel Peace Prize winners to the youth of the world. The Dalai Lama was the first one. He's the only Nobel Peace Prize winner that we knew when my husband Ivan Savanchev came up with the idea for Peace Jam. We, we asked the Dalai Lama first and he said yes, I would love to do more with youth but don't just work with me. Um, and Tenzin Geshe gave us a list of seven other Nobel laureates who the Dalai Lama thought would be good, um, and we just cold called them. And so for 25 years, we've been working um, uh, on Peace Jam, and it's reached over a million young people around the world. We're in 40 different countries. And my husband, Ivan, was a former journalist, and he said, this is history. History. These are historic figures. We need to film everything. So we ended up with footage, so much footage. And seven, eight years ago, he said, Let's do something with all this footage. We had a closet full of footage, of more footage of these Nobel Peace Prize winners than anyone else. This is the seventh film in our Nobel Legacy film series. All six of the films to date are award-winning films and they've been really well received around the world. Right, absolutely. I wouldn't take much of your time. I know you are busy with the preparation for the uh, world premiere. Um, I wish you good luck with the premiere, and I believe there's going to be a Nobel Peace Laureate um, present at your premiere, so good luck with that. Thank you. Thank you so much for the interview.